Hey, what's going on, fam? It's your man, Dr. All the second. I hope you're doing well. Uh, you know, I keep late hours, so I'm asleep in a little bit, but I want to share this word that the Lord put on, Lord put on my heart earlier today. So uh, let's go for the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this message. I pray that this would um, be what you desire for me to say, and I pray that the hearts and minds that hear it would be um, touched and impacted and drawn to you, Father. I pray that more souls would be brought to your kingdom, and I pray, God, that you would get all the glory. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. I pray that the Holy Spirit would just move in this session and um, just touch my heart and lead me into what you want me to say. And I say, Lord, anything anything in me, not of you, I repent of, and I pray you cleanse me, purify me, and sanctify me in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. Um, this is about praise. And, you know, I love talking about this because it's just, it's such a powerful, powerful tool and a blessing to um, be able to do so. Um, I've spoken on it in times past, but praise is so important. And I wanted to talk about not underestimating the impact of your praise. You know, we live in a climate today where it's so common to just complain. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I don't like to really listen to people who complain all the time. And that includes me. Sometimes I can be a trip and I can check myself. Sometimes if I'm sleepy, irritable, or frustrated, I start tripping, I might complain. That's a reminder to me to turn on some praise music or some worship music and set my attention on him or or read my word because what's happening is my flesh is out of pocket and I need to be reminded that I need to subject my flesh or I, uh, what's the word? Um, I die daily. I have to put my flesh into subjection. There we go. And allow my spirit man to lead me. And so I wanted to read a couple of verses that you guys can go and check for yourself, but I wanted to just remind you the importance of praise. What you speak, that influences and impacts your life. Proverbs says death and life are in the power of the tongue and we will eat the fruit thereof. So be very careful the words that come out of your mouth. And the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when it comes to your heart, it's important to spend time reading God's word, putting his word in your heart. It says in the book of Psalms, thy word I have hidden in my heart so I might not sin against thee. And it's really important to spend that time with God because it really does have a powerful, a powerful, impactful experience on your overall well-being. So I'm going to read a couple of verses and I encourage you to go read it for yourself so you can um, allow God to minister to you too. I'm talking a little fast, my bad. Uh, this is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendants said to him, see, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes upon you and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the harp. He is a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking man and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and David, send me your son, David, who was with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine and a young goat and sent them with his son, David, to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much and David became one of his armor bearers. Then Saul sent word to Jesse saying, allow David to remain in my service for I am pleased with him. Whenever the spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. Now, isn't that powerful? Whenever that spirit came upon Saul, David would play the harp. He would minister. I bet he would sing too. And it would drive that spirit away. When we worship God, how many of you know that the enemy will flee because he don't want to be around that? I've understood that principle because it's so true. The enemy wants you to come into agreement with your situation and to basically give up and start complaining. But what that does is it can impact your relationship with the Lord and drive a wedge in your fellowship because God doesn't like complaining. He'll listen to your heart. He'll listen to you vent. But he wants you to be thankful. He'll be a cheerful giver. He wants you to be in agreement with what he says. Because when you put his word into the out of your mouth, that's, that's an act of faith because you're trusting him and you're speaking what he has said. And God is not a God that lies. So he's speaking truth. So when you are in an atmosphere of challenges, 
It's okay to praise God. When you're going through hard times, it's okay to praise God. It may not seem rational or logical because the most convenient thing to do or more opportune thing to do would be to complain. But the truth is, when you decide to come into agreement with what the Lord has said, you are giving yourself an opportunity to not only bless the Lord, but to bless yourself. Because you're giving your burdens unto God. You're taking your mind off of your situation. And you might receive something in return. Now, ultimately, I'm not trying to cheapen the experience of praise. We want to praise God with sincere hearts. But I am saying there's a benefit for you. For, uh, for you. It's not just because I want something. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But that's a blessing. You get something. But it's a way to say, I give to you, Lord. I surrender. I give myself away. And it's an act of faith because you're taking your mind off of all the calamity. You're taking your mind off all the challenges. And you're coming to him. And as you do that, he honors that. And when you just praise him, even on a regular basis, not just when things are tough, it strengthens your relationship. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And I believe it's a sweet fragrance unto his lungs. And so I want to encourage you, praise God. Even when you're suffering, that praise is coming from a sincere place because you're going through it. It ain't just lip service. He said, these people's worship is a farce. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. He was talking about the Jewish people when they were in hypocrisy how they would pretend to be all about the Lord, but their lives and their words did not line up. But I imagine as believers, and this is my take, I believe a scripture would support this, but I'll speak on it, that when we're serving God and we're going through hard times, I believe it purifies our praise, and I believe it is a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord. So I'm going to read another verse. I'm going to read another one. That first one was 1 Samuel chapter 16. Um, I'm going now into the book of Acts, the New Testament, chapter 16 as well. How about that? Verse 16, and it says this, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. Mm -hmm. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar. By advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to pra accept or practice, the crowd joined in the attack and against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cells and fastened their, seat, their feet in the stocks. This is heavy duty. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. Isn't that crazy? Praise brought them chains loose. Praise and God did. The jailer, jailer, excuse me, the jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped because he would have been held accountable if that was the case. Um, but Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the order, release those men. <coughs> The jailer told Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave. Go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens and threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No. Let them come themselves and escort us out. The officers reported this to the magistrates. And when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, 
they were alarmed. They came to appease them and escorted them from the prison, requesting them to leave the city. After Paul and Silas came out of the prison, they went to Lydia's house, where they met with the brothers and encouraged them. Then they left. Now, there's a lot to take in, but I'm not going to focus on everything. I just want to say what we saw here were Paul and Silas minding their business. A young slave girl, a young fortune teller was harassing them. He cast that spirit out of her. As a result, he was they were attacked, beaten, and mistreated, thrown into prison. And while in prison, they didn't lose their faith. They began to pray and worship God while they were locked down. Their feet were locked in, in uh, uh, stocks. Yeah, they were fastened. And so basically, even though they were in, imprisoned in their circumstances, shackled and chained, the praise prompted the Lord to create an earthquake and set them free. What do you get from that? It set the other people free too. They just happened to be there. And then the jailer himself gave his life to the Lord and his family. By praising God, being in that situation, God moved and salvation came not only to them from their circumstance, but also the jailer found Jesus and maybe any others there too. I got to go back and look. I just think it's powerful how praise works. And I just encourage you, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're facing, trust God and praise him. God is honored by that. And you are doing yourself a service by simply giving the burden to the Lord. Sometimes we're too busy trying to figure everything out up here. We stress ourselves out. And God is saying, I didn't create you to be miserable. I didn't create you to be stressed out. I created you to enjoy your, my, your life and trust me. So I, he's giving you an opportunity to praise him. So I encourage you the next time you're going through a hard time, simply say, Lord, I thank you. Even before a hard time, because you wake up in the morning, Lord, I thank you. Lord, you're good to me. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. You start doing that stuff, speaking with your lips, I guarantee you God's going to respond because you're blessing them. And so I just want to encourage you today, whatever you're going through, never underestimate the power of your praise. That includes worship, prayer as well, but praise. Get to praise of God because God moves. We saw the first story. Demons were driven out of King Saul simply because there was worship in the atmosphere. I have seen atmosphere where, where the presence of God was so strong. People dealing with de demons and strongholds began to react and respond because the presence of God is something about that. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We see God's spirit move in this situation. There was liberty. His spirit was with Paul and Silas. There was liberty. And so I encourage you today, you may be in a tough situation, but praise God. Praise him anyway. I don't just say praise God. I'm telling you, you praise God. You be active in your praise. You give him your all and rest assured he's going to respond. That's all I got for you. I'm thinking of a song, but it's 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 a form of worship, but I can sing it some. It's, um, it's two songs by Fred Hammond. Let me see. Um, as I'm drifting to sleep. Um, you guys know this one. Oh, hang on, hang on. Um, it's from one of his old ones. It's called, um, it's off the Spirit of David album, which is a great album. I recommend it. But it goes, uh, draw nigh. It goes, um, Lord, Lord, my heart chases after thee. How shall I draw you close to me? A broken spirit. And a contrite heart, to this you will draw nigh, and I'll draw nigh. I have to cut myself off. I never realized the time. If you don't know Jesus, come to know him while you can. If you place your faith in Jesus, believing he died on the cross and rose again from the grave, you will be saved from your sins. Accept him as Lord and Savior in your heart. You'll be attacked at times, as we read in this story, but nevertheless, you will be blessed. You will go to heaven, and it's by faith in Jesus that makes you saved, not your own works, because all of us are born in sin. So if you want to know Jesus, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you were brought back from the dead by God, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Jesus said, count the cost, because sometimes it will be tough. Sometimes you will be hated because you love the Lord, but you're blessed when you're persecuted, when you're doing what he calls you to do. So I recommend you get in a Bible-based church, watch God transform your life. And then also, before it cuts off for those Instagram folks, if you're looking for a new book to read with great reading, I highly recommend my new book, Random Thoughts of a Believer on Amazon. It was a blessing to write it, and um, I've heard some good reviews, and I, it's really inspired by the Lord. So I know it's a blessing um, for those who read it. So be encouraged. I'm going to finish the song for us YouTube folks. All right, let me start over, y'all. <clears throat> 
Lord, my heart chases after thee. How shall I draw you close to me? A broken spirit and a contrite heart. To this you will draw nigh, and I'll draw nigh. I will draw nigh to you, and you will draw nigh unto me. I'll sing a serenade while tears of joy wash my face. You are my reward, nothing else compares to you. O oh God of my salvation, I'm drawing nigh to you. I'm drawing nigh to you. Craving righteousness, I'm thirsty for your presence. With all I have, I'll worship the beauty of your holiness. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. To this you will draw nigh, and I'll draw nigh. Yes, I will draw nigh to you. You will draw nigh unto me. I'll sing a serenade while tears of joy wash my face. You are my reward. Nothing else compares to you. O oh God of my salvation, I'm drawing nigh to you. I'm drawing nigh to you. I will draw nigh, I will draw nigh, just to be closer. I will draw nigh, I will draw nigh, with a contrite spirit, yes, or with a broken spirit, yes, and a contrite heart. You said you won't despise it or cast me away. So I'm crying, can I get, can I get Jesus closer, closer, near you, to fulfill my joy? Can I get closer, closer, near you, to fulfill my joy? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I didn't warm up, so I can't go much higher right now. <laughs> but I pray this blessed you. I pray and encourage you. And I and I want to say this last thing. The book of James says if you draw closer to draw close to the Lord, he will draw close to you. And so that's the one thing I want to encourage you guys. I'm grateful to be a vessel, but guess what? You can be a vessel too. When you spend time in the presence of God, your heart becomes sensitive, you become inclined, you can hear his voice. He'll talk to you. He speaks in different ways. He may speak to you here, he may speak to you audibly. But he speaks and he confirms when he speaks. And so I want to encourage you to spend time in the presence of God. I'm blessed that you're tuning in, but read your word for yourself. Because like you, I have to spend time and grow in my walk with Jesus. And, you know, I can get it wrong sometimes. But when you spend time in the word, you you get the opportunity to develop your worship and your relationship with God as well. So now I'm saying one last thing as we go. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he's worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, 
Yes, he is good. Yes, he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Worthy. For he is good. Yes, he is good. For you are worthy. Worthy. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. One more time. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For you are good. Yes, you are good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are worthy. Worthy. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are worthy. Worthy. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. I'm over time. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. For you are worthy. Worthy. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are worthy. Worthy, yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. First, you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are worthy. Worthy, yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. Yes, he is worthy. Worthy, yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are. Are good. I want to say one more, y'all. I know I keep saying I'm going to stop, but I really feel it in my spirit. So I'm going to keep going. You can stop if you have to. Oh, give thanks. Unto the Lord, for you are good. Yes, you are good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are worthy. Worthy. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. For you are worthy. Worthy, yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. You are worthy. Worthy, yes, you are good. Uh huh, yes, you are good. Yes, you are worthy. Worthy, you are good. Yes, you are good. Praise brings breakthrough. So keep singing. Keep singing. Okay, I got one more. I want to sing that again. That just blessed me. Hold on. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? That's a little too high. How do you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Let me start over for lower. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? When I call, 
Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Last point. You are a friend of God. You are a friend of God. You are a friend of God. He calls you friend. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Lord of glory, God of mercy, you have called me friend. That goes with the words. God of glory, Lord of mercy, you have called me friend. Lord of glory, God of mercy, you have called me friend. Lord of glory, God of mercy, you have called me friend. Boom, 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 boom. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. <clears throat> Getting dry in my throat. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Whoa. All right, y'all. I can keep singing and singing. But I know it's getting kind of late. Um, I'm thinking if there's anything else, God, to put in my heart before I go. You hear my voice starting to get tired? Uh, I think that's what I have for now. I'm tired. <laughs> Let's see if I can. I'm going to try one more. I'm going to try one more. This is a Fred Hammer one. Um, that's a good one. Uh, <clears throat> Such a sweet communion as every day I see your face. Knowing that your best for me is wherever you are. You can speak a life in me and take me up on ego's wings. And all day long I think on these things. Lord, they that keep their mind stayed on you will be kept in perfect peace. And I know you are able to cause all fear to cease every day. Can't let a day go by without keeping my mind, keeping it stayed on Jesus, stayed on Jesus. With every new sunrise, I got to keep my mind, meditate on him and keep the spirit deep within. When the darkness covers me and my light grows strangely dim, it's your power that anchors me as I keep your words deep within. So what the day holds for me makes me want to hide. But as long as you are my guide, but they that keep their minds stayed on you will be kept in perfect peace. And I know you are able to cause all fears to cease every day. 
Can't let a day go by without keeping my mind, keeping it stayed on Jesus. Stayed on Jesus. With every new sunrise, I gotta keep my mind. Meditate on Him and keep the spirit deep within. Oh, what joy you bring to me as I learn to trust in you. You've proven to be all that I need, all that I need. So I'll say, stay, stay, stay. Meditate on him and keep the spirit deep within. Stay, stay, stay. Meditate on him and keep the spirit deep within. Oh, stay, stay, stay. Meditate on him and keep the spirit deep within. Four times. Stay, stay, stay. Meditate on him and keep the spirit deep within. Oh. All right, y'all. I'm going to stop for real because it's, it's late. It's probably midnight. I need to get to sleep. Well, be encouraged, be blessed, and just know praise. There's power in your praise.